Sir, what does it mean to have debilitated planets in the Navamsha? Does it mean that my life is ruined in regards to whatever that planet represents? So, for example, if Sun is uh, in Libra in the Navamsha, does it mean I will never get name fame if Saturn is in Libra? Uh, sorry, Aries. <laughs> And does it mean I will always have delays, disappointments, uh, setbacks? Uh, and if uh, you can take it for any planet, if Venus is in Virgo, does it mean I'll never get married or I will always have failed relationships or will I be cheated? So does it mean that that way? So see, whenever we talk of the Navamsha, we have to understand that there are two things we should never ignore. So the first thing that is very important in context of Navamsha, is that you study the Divan chart first. So I keep telling this always. So for example, if you feel that a planet is in debility in the Navamsha, now that's not a great placement to have. But you have to figure out the most important thing, which is how much of an impact is this debilitated planet going to have in my real life? Because... My real life is seen from the Lagna chart. So that, that is not seen from the Navamsha chart. Now, what, what does it mean when I say real life? Real life, what does it mean? Is it internal, external? Real means in your uh, real world, the external things which are happening. How much of an impact is it having there? So, for example, a planet may be in debility. So, for example, suppose Venus is in debility in the Navamsha. Uh, but the person uh, is living like a monk, uh, as a monk, I mean, uh, in, in some monastery, in some temple, okay, in any religious center or spiritual place. And then this person has Venus in debility in the Navamsa. So, uh, do you think that this person uh, will be very much mortified uh, because of this Venus in debility? Well, not really, because uh, the lifestyle of an ashram or a monastery. Uh, is by default very austere and there is hardly anything Venusian, I mean, at an external level. Internally, you can say Venus is, you know, devotion and attraction towards, you know, certain things. It, it can also be attraction towards your spiritual path, spiritual commitments. But it necessarily does not mean uh, that... Uh, if you if you if you are staying in a monastery, you know you 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 will have to have a great Venus. Otherwise, you know you are going to have some problems with uh, women there. It's it's not necessary that way, right? So in in that case, so similarly, if you have a career which uh, or not career or you know if you have a very Venusian lifestyle, you, know, you have nothing to do with religion, spirituality. You have nothing to do with family. Uh, you have nothing to do with children. Um, you have nothing nothing to do with, you know, rules, regulations. I mean, you're just having a Venusian lifestyle. You know, you're just earning money and just enjoying life. So then even if Jupiter is in debility in the Navamsa, will it have a very big impact? Well, not necessarily for that area of life. But of course, Jupiter having uh, a debility position, Jupiter in debility in the Navamsa can have some other... Uh, repercussions in some other areas of life even if you are not interested in a Jupiterian lifestyle and that will always happen irrespective of <coughs> any planet's debility in the Navamsa. So this is the first thing that we need to understand which is how, what, what is the debilitated planet in the Navamsa, what is it doing in the Lagna chart which means we have to see how much of that planet's traits are we going to actually uh, experience in reality? So, for example, another example. Suppose Mercury is in debility in Navamsha. But you, your, uh, your profession is uh, not involving so much Mercury and traits. Like there's not much writing or consulting or, you know, uh, like uh, accounts or counting related things. Your profession is more of like... Um, uh, creative work, okay, where you don't need that much mercury. I mean, you need it, but uh, it's not going to hamper you too much. But now if you say you have mercury in a prominent position in the Lagna chart, and then and specifically for career, so suppose mercury is uh, in your uh, sixth house, for example, then that's a very prominent placement for uh, your profession. 
That means your profession can include uh, considerable mercury and traits. Now, if you have this mercury badly placed in Pisces, in debility, in the Navamsha, <clears throat> this can mean that you need to use a lot of mercury and traits, but somehow uh, maybe you are not able to use it properly. So this is the first thing you have to check, which is very important because sometimes, and it can be the other way around also. So for example, you have an exalted planet in Navamsha. You have sun in Aries, for example. But now this sun uh, has does not have a very prominent position in your horoscope, neither is the dasha coming? I mean, in the D1 horoscope, I mean D1. So the and the Mahadasha is not going to come. I mean, maybe in this life, maybe it comes when you are 80, 90, or 100. So then, uh, is this exalted sun in the Navamsha? Is it going to be something extraordinarily good? Uh, well, not necessarily, because somehow in this life, you are not destined to get the fruits of that planet. So now, of course, you will get the antardashas, right? So in the antardashas, you can have some level of, you know, name, fame, power, position, recognition for the government, authority, dominance, and all this. But that will be very temporary, okay? Because the Mahadasha is not coming, and sun is not inherently uh, prominent in your T1 chart. Prominent means it is not in the artha houses, or it's not in the lagna or trikona or some. That that's how you can know. So that, that means uh, you you understand that there is an inherent quality which I have, which is uh, either good because of exaltation or it, it is challenged because of the debility. But depending on the Lagna chart, we will see how much of an impact that exaltation or debility will have in our own life. So if you have a debilitated planet and if that planet uh, is not... Uh, having a big say then uh, in the D1 then uh, you, you don't have to worry about it. Now on the other hand uh, if you have a plant in debility and it is placed in a very prominent position like you know for example the Lagna or the 10th house or the 7th house because these three are very 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 important because you know one is your health, the other one is your marriage and the other one is your profession. So and seventh house can also show business. So it becomes very, 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 very important. Sometimes even more important than the tenth uh, house. And nowadays, you know, maybe tenth house is very, very, very important because it's the house of career, name, fame, as you know. So if in that case, if you have a planet, so suppose your Mercury is in debility, it's in Pisces in D9, and in D1, it's in the... <clears throat> Uh, it is in the Lagna, okay, so then, uh, or the 10th or the 7th, so then it means that uh, you might frequently need to use Mercury and traits in your business or uh, for learning or in your profession, even in your job sometimes. Uh, so then maybe you might have to do some remedies for Mercury. So wh whenever a planet is in debility, it doesn't mean the planet is bad, okay. So what does it mean? It means that the planet has not matured in the past lifetimes. We have not paid attention to that planet. It, it just means that. It's like, imagine there are certain areas, or rather than imagining, you can actually see there are certain areas in your life which, uh, which, which somehow you have not focused on in the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, you know, somehow, and they have not grown. Have you seen? Like some people, uh, they, they are very conscious about their health. And so that area is good. That area grows. They have a long life. They are disease-free. Some people are very focused on their appearance, you know, so they can look good They uh, or they can use a lot of, you know, makeup and all this. So they, they, they can appear uh, relatively uh, better than other people. And sometimes, you know, people, they are working 18 hours a day. So they're having a lot of money also, right? So because... Um, results will come depending on where the energy flows and energy flows where the effort flows. So that means, and sometimes, you know, people, they, they have fo focused so much on their profession, you know, and they have hardly paid any interest towards their uh, personal life, you know, their marriage or something, you know, they're, they're like, they're in what not age. And then still, even if you ask them, uh, when, when, when will you get married or are you looking to get married? then they get angry and they say, no, I just want my profession, right? So 
whatever it is or sometimes you know people focus too much on marriage and on profession and they lose out on their health and the what's the worst case scenario you you have a great body good health good appearance good money good intelligence good married life you have all the five and maybe good children also but you ruined your spiritual life you never focused on it right <laughs> so uh, that's like the worst case scenario so whatever you focus on so imagine there is something which you have not focused on okay mostly in kali yuga spiritual life is the one which goes into the background it's like uh, always at the back foot like I, i i get consultations where i talk to people and then when i tell them okay this is one mantra you should chant and they say oh yes sir i, I will try my best sir to chant if i get time i will somehow chant sir <laughs> <laughs> which means they will get up they will do instagram facebook you know what what not they will do and then you know they will uh, go to the office they will take baths they will eat three times a day they will have netflix and then they will spend time with the family enjoy vacations and at the end by god's grace or by the grace of the devil rather if there is some free time left then people will just go and do some spiritual practices that too while doing that they'll be thinking of the other activities wow what a royal disaster right so that's how it happens in kali yuga spiritual life is always at the back foot but as we know from the four purusharthas right dharma artha kama moksha so dharma should come first which means spiritual life should be our first priority then our artha then our kama and then moksha but in kali yuga it's not uh, four purusharthas it is artha kama and moksha what is moksha just go and sleep <laughs> so that's the conception of moksha these days oh yeah, yeah i also love moksha there's one uh, lady who told me i love moksha sir and i was like oh wow you love moksha yes i love to sleep <laughs> eight hours a day you know? oh, yeah that's great that's a part of moksha because that rejuvenates you but that's not what moksha is uh, in essence right so we have to understand that if a planet is badly placed in the navamsha then it's like the planet is in the back bench okay like in school there are back benchers i mean of course this example may not fit exactly but uh, because there are many back benchers who can be very successful in later life and nothing against back benchers but back bencher means it's like a person who doesn't a student who doesn't study or is not interested to study or just studies because of formality okay so that that's how you know uh, so therefore if you see that a plant is in debility what do you do you learn more about that planet you should educate yourself about that planet you should uh, consult somebody regarding that planet who uh, and the person who you consult should be having positive energy in that area of life so for example if if you feel that uh, your uh, relationships don't work okay your marriage is bad your marriage is not working or your whatever your boyfriend or girlfriend there's always break up and you are unable to sustain in relationship then you should consult consult somebody who not may not be an astrologer but who you should consult is somebody who is having good relationships they will tell you they will explain how how should you be a good uh, partner and how how should you uh can carry on a good relationship similarly if you have problems in your career you should consult somebody who has had a reasonable good career journey good doesn't mean just out of luck but the person has paid uh, a lot of uh, has given a lot of efforts and then the person has uh, succeeded to uh, very high levels okay so whenever i say you should uh, consult don't uh, think i am saying you should go and consult an astrologer but anybody who is successful in that area of life and they may or may not be successful in other areas of life but we should definitely consult them if we see they are very successful in that area of life and read more about that uh, planet and the nature you know and try to experience a part of it you know so for example if jupiter is in debility in your navamsha then uh you should try to do some spiritual practices in the morning read about law of karma read about the bhagavad gita i mean read the bhagavad gita of course or there are a lot of other introductory books also about the bhagavad gita that you can read 
or you can read the Bible or the Torah or which, whichever tradition you are inspired by. You can read about spiritual personalities. You can read about different acharyas, right? So, and most importantly, you should visit a spiritual community where you can uh, find like-minded people who are also gearing up for spiritual progress. <clears throat> so this is very important. This is part one. And part two is very easy, but the most difficult. The one which I always keep saying, comprehensive analysis. So for example, if you have a debilitated planet in the Navamsha, now you have seen case one, okay, either it's prominent in D1 or it's not prominent, you have seen. Now you go back to the Navamsha and you see what is this planet doing in the Navamsha? What what exactly is it trying is it trying to do? Is it trying to take away take away something from me? Or is it trying to give me something? Give me means just not good, maybe something difficult also, right? Or take away means, uh, which is not necessarily bad, it takes away something bad from you, so that's good. <clears throat> so we have to actually see what exactly is the energy of this planet. Is, is, is it just that it's in debility? <clears throat> so for example, if you have a debilitated planet in Navamsha, but you have it in 5th or the ninth of the Navamsha. Then it means you have the potential to learn about the planet. So then you go and learn and you improve the energy of that planet. So now imagine you have a, uh, a planet like Jupiter which is you know in debility in the Navamsha. But it is in the ninth house in, in, in the sign of Capricorn. So that's a great thing because now you can learn from a guru because ninth house is the guru. So go and uh, seek a guide or a coach or a counselor or a consultant who can help you in that area of life. And we know what Jupiter represents, right? Jupiter shows finance and spirituality and all these things, right? And it shows family, children and all this also. Uh, so therefore, it's very important that we do a comprehensive analysis after we uh, see the D1. And then step three is, of course, you have to club both the charts together and see, you know, and dynamically you have to use the shas. This is the fourth, uh, fourth uh, thing that you can do. So see how both the charts are fitting in, in step three. Uh, not only the individual planet. No, do not do this mistake. Don't just see, oh, he's here, there, there, that's all. Okay, he's exalted here, there, he's un not in a prominent place. Okay, that's fine. No, try to see all the planets for both the charts. So read two charts separately, independently, and then you try to combine. And of course, the step four is maybe the most important. Every step is important, but fourth is also very important, which most of the people, they will always end up ignoring, which is your Mahadasha and your Antardasha. And you can also use step five, which is transits. But even if you don't use transits, you must at least use the Dashas because <clears throat> you have to understand how things are playing out dynamically. Is, is that debilitated planet's energy going to affect me in this dasha? Is it going to affect me in a negative way or in a positive way? So that you should be able to figure out from the horoscope. Otherwise, you'll just say, oh yeah, that planet is good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. Achha hai, bura hai, shubh hai, ashubh hai, mushkil hai, asan hai, this, that, this, that. But if I, if I ask you, Okay, but um, now I have uh, this dasha, for example. I have Mars Antar dasha. Mm, so will will a debilitated Mercury in the Navamsha placed in the fifth house of D1, will it affect me in Mars dasha? Well, it depends on the chart, right? So, therefore, every planet, either it's in D1 or D9, will somehow have some effects in the dashas of every planet. So, for example, if you are running Sun Mahadasha, Moon Antar Dasha, even then, you may think, oh, but my Mars is in debility somewhere, right? It doesn't affect me. Why? Because now I am in Sun Mahadasha, Moon Antar Dasha, right? Oh, yeah, in Sun Mars, it will affect me. No, it doesn't work like that. That debilitated planet can also affect you in Sun, I mean, that debilitated Mars can also affect you in Sun Moon Dasha because maybe moon mars are conjunct or maybe sun mars they are conjunct or maybe mars is in trines to sun moon or maybe mars is aspecting either sun or moon right 
So when you see all this, you will understand that, oh yeah, just because I'm in sun, moon, it doesn't mean, you know, Mars is just uh, useless in the horoscope for the for the next, you know, four months, six months. Does it mean that? Well, absolutely not. Every, every time uh, you have a change in Adasha, all the nine planets are working. So do not think, oh, I have... Sun Mahadasha for six years, you know. I will only see sun and when Antar Dasha comes, I will see that planet and then I will just go and sleep. No, it doesn't work like that. Unfortunately or rather fortunately it doesn't because every planet is somehow interacting with every other planet. Okay. And they will try to... <laughs> I hope you understood, right? All right then. Please use these five steps and deal with planets... Uh, that are debilitated in the Navamsha. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your patience. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up at the end, which is now. And uh, if you want a consultation from me, my website is down below. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you, you must find him. <laughs> Thank you.